thought I'd do now since I did have some uh, screen recording software that I was not aware of. Uh, believe it or not, on a Mac, QuickTime Video has a screen recording uh, function, so I thought I'd give it a shot here. Um, I'm using my iPhone headphones with a speaker, so hopefully the audio comes out as well. So I was talking earlier and I showed you on, on the... Uh, I uh, tried to put the camera pointing at the screen. So anyway, this is the reverse beacon network. Um, what I use this rever reverse beacon network for mainly is um, testing my transmit signal. And typically I will put up a new antenna. I'll, I'll make an antenna. I'll experiment with a piece of wire, uh, with a, uh, a vertical antenna. Uh, you name it. Uh, amateur radio operators, that's, that's the fun part of this hobby is um, building your own equipment, whether it be a small pocket transceiver, um, whether it be that little um, 9 to 1 unin I showed you earlier, or even a transceiver kit that you get in the mail when you have to uh, assemble all the components. Uh, the, the biggest thing we like to build is antennas, because everybody, you know, the, the, your signal is only as good as, as, as the antenna that you use. So anyway, here we go up to this reverse beacon network. If you go to the page, uh, this is how it looks. I always go straight to the main part of the page here. And um, it'll come up with a screen, and it'll show you a map, right, if you look right here. Um, and these are all signals that have been recorded by um, different uh, people, stations around the, uh, the globe, actually. And um, these are, you know, from here to here, here to here, etc. Uh, which is good to know that, you know, you can see where there's, their signals are originating. You can filter it for, by different bands. But the way I like to use this is I will go search by call sign and I'll click that. It'll open up this dialog box and I'll just put my call sign in there and I'll click search. It should come up with something because as you can see right here a few days ago I made a long wire antenna and I was checking the, the transmit on different bands. Because you know so many things affect ham radio operations. Uh, weather is the primary function. The solar cycle is the other one. Well, the solar cycle is probably the primary. So anyway, day, night, you name it. Um, so what I did, I put this antenna up, and um, I went through different bands on the, uh, the the frequency chart, and I always keep a band plan handy. I'm not even recording. I keep a band plan handy so I know uh, that I'm in the right band. I will plug in a frequency on my radio, and what I'll do is um, I'll send uh, the word test in Morse code, followed by my call sign two times, and the word test once again. Now, I don't know if the word test is required at the end, but I do it anyway, just so nobody tries to call me back. And then I'll come to the reverse beacon network. And as you can see right here, this, this person here, this call sign, and it tells you their location. I could look them up and find where they are. So um, I, think, I think these are in, I think this person here is in, um, Pennsylvania, yep, right there. That's the call sign in Pennsylvania. And this other individual is in um, Utah. So as you can see, this frequency right here made it all the way out to Pennsylvania from Virginia. And this one made it all the way out to Utah. So it's not bad for a homemade antenna. And, and you know, I was only putting out probably 10, 15 watts. As you can see, the signal to noise ratio is a lot lower for the farther away station, twice actually is 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 weak or the one here in Pennsylvania is twice as strong and then it shows you the date and the time another thing you can do is if you have a friend who's an amateur radio operator and operates in Morse code you can type in their call sign and see when the last time they were on the air now uh, the uh, another YouTube channel I've mentioned in one of my recent vlogs anything with wheels his call sign is N9YO and I do a search for him and um, it's thinking about it Let me close these two tabs. All right, well, it is thinking about it. So, um, let me refresh it. So anyway, this is the, there you go. So this, this individual here is the same one that heard me probably. That one is in Utah, absolutely is. So he probably got a big station set up there and he records everything. So the frequency he was on, um, he was doing CW, which is continuous wave data or Morse code. I know it was Morse code. And he was sending at 16 words a minute. The signal strength is pretty strong. I think he's in Missouri. And this was a date time group and uh, that kind of thing. So you can see when people that you want to talk to are on the air. Uh, so it's a good tool for a lot of different reasons. Um, and and that's, that those are the ones, the reasons that I use this. 
Uh, another tool I use is this site called Hamalert. And um, Hamalert uh, lets you go in and uh, let me go to the home page of it here real quick. It tells you what it is, how it works, how to get notifications, and you go to triggers. And the triggers I use are frequency bands, uh, modes, whether it's phone, whether they use the microphone or Morse code or, or data. Uh, and I want to be notified by this call sign, this call sign, and this call sign. This call sign right here is a gentleman out in Oregon who do, does a lot of summits on the air or soda activations. And um, I'd like, we've interacted previously via Facebook and email, and I'd really like to catch him when he does one of these summit activations. I mean, they put out, you know, really low power, five, seven, maybe 10 watts. And uh, to be able to contact me or me to contact him from this far away, from Virginia to Oregon, with that little amount of power would be pretty cool. So when I see him on the air, I do my best to get on and see if I can hear his signal. N9YO, we just discussed, he's in, he's in Missouri. He does some uh, portable radio operations as well. And this gentleman right here, K4JAZ, was my instructor uh, during the CW Academy's Level 1 training for Morse code. And I'd like to catch him on the air just to have an exchange with him because I think that would complete our training if I was actually having a Morse code conversation uh, with our instructor. But anyway, those are two of the apps that I use um, when I am uh, using my ham radio stuff. Another one I use is this program right here called MacLogger DX. Um, I have a cable, USB cable I showed you earlier plugged into the radio. Um, I double click this right here and it actually tunes the radio to that frequency right here, as you can see right there. And uh, it gives me the information on this, uh, the, the operator for that station. And um, it does it for everywhere. And these are all spots. Now, some of these I can't hear, some of these I can. Uh, let me, I'll just turn the radio on so if we can hear this guy. Yep, you can hear him. Barely. And he's, he's in Canada. So, uh, you know, we're at the mercy of the atmosphere when it comes to ham radio. But um, it's still fun for me. A lot of experimentation. So, anyway, that was my ham shack, my antennas, and uh, my station, and some software. So, so, anyway, hopefully everybody gets an idea of ham radio operations and what my setup looks like. And I'll talk to you all later.